Do you know there have actually been reports of crop dust? There was one report I read of a crop duster having a mid-air collision with another crop duster in, same, in the field. They crashed, pew, fell to the ground. These guys got out. They weren't hurt, and they went back to work flying other airplanes the same day. Can you believe that? That's, that comes from inhaling too much paraquat, I think. <laughs> not but it just goes to show you that that little extra space up in front makes all the difference in the world, right? But do you know you can get that extra space by sliding your seat back in an airplane? That's right. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and you don't have to put a 55-gallon drum of Paraquat up there either. It's, uh, it's intriguing. That long nose on that 411 right there, the baggage compartment nose, that difference in space makes all the difference in the world. As a matter of fact, we know that in terms of crashworthiness, a pilot at 50 miles per hour stopping in two feet pulls 43 Gs. That is a lot. The human body can withstand 40 Gs for about a second, not much more than that. I, and the human body has amazing resiliency, but not at 40 Gs for 5, 10, 50, doesn't have that kind of resiliency. However, a pilot stopping at 50 miles per hour, stopping in 5 feet, pulls 17 Gs. That is much more survivable. We're talking about broken bones and ribs here, but a survivable accident and versus 43 Gs at 5 feet. So, the difference between two feet and five feet, which is three feet, means the difference between survivable versus non-survivable. Very, very important. You, that is the crux of what I'm going to talk about next, and that is you have to find a way to slow down in such a way that you slow down in the longest or through the longest possible distance available to you versus the shortest possible distance. In other words, if you're going to slow down, try and stretch it out rather than trying to slow down in a short period of distance. By the way, do you know why turning back to the airport is one of the most unsurvivable, one of the most dangerous things that it is the Russian roulette of aviation? It, it, low, slow, but most importantly, when you hit the ground, what is it that you're hitting? Something that is going to give or something that's, something that's not going to give. Exactly. The distance between you and the, the nose of the airplane right there is probably only about maybe three feet, maybe four feet. Uh, and as a result, when you hit, there, there's nothing to compress except an engine. There's nothing that gives, and therefore, that's why that is so incredibly unsurvivable. I would rather take my airplane, if I had a choice, and that is spinning it into the ground this way or diving it headlong into the side of a building, a home. A, a, a rural structure, just a nice little home right out there. I would rather dive it right into the side of the building rather than crash this way. Why? Building's going to give. Outhouse, perfect. Right into the outhouse. Right there. Okay. Now, obviously, not going to use it if somebody's in there. Okay. Obviously not. Uh, I, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. The point is, you need to find a way to give you the deceleration you need. This just won't work. It, it should, you, you must keep that in mind. Aluminum shed, wonderful. A home, perhaps an automobile, yeah, but a truck. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just naming things off. These are not things for you, you to list as targets to hit. When you're in the but in terms of frangibility, they're all a lot more attractive options than would be something like, uh, well, and, and it's obviously something like a, a, a cement and asphalt. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. So a friend of mine uh, pretty much walked away from that to uh, a bird dog by putting it between two trees and shooting the wind off. You bet. You bet. Two trees, and, and that works real well. You can actually do it with one tree. I'll show you a guy in a second that did it with one tree sheared the wing off, and the airplane rolled. That's perfectly legitimate. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm hesitant to tell you this, but you're all grown-ups, big boys and girls here. Don't try this at home is what I'm trying to say. And that is, there's a gentleman that is a movie crash pilot, and he crashes airplanes like this. He'll take them, and he, now remember, there's no fuel in the tank, uh, limited fuel. He'll come down just before he hits. He'll take the airplane, put it into a side slip. As the airplane side slip, the wing, left wing hits the ground, and as a result of that, the airplane twists and this rolling vertiginous motion causes the empennage, the vertical and horizontal stabilizer, and the wings to be used as frangible structures that break off absorbing the energy of impact. Keep in mind, he's also doing this at a very slow speed. And it just, in other words, the energy is distributed around the cockpit, so he gets out, walks away, and the airplane's totally destroyed. It's a rental. 
no big deal. <laughs> but, 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 but you can't do that because, again, he's doing it with no fuel in the tanks. There are better ways to do this. But th that is the whole, this is what I'm, I'm trying to get implanted in your psyche, this concept of distance. This is not in your chart or in your booklet. I'd like you to write this down for me. And what this is, is the stopping distance versus ground speed for a 9G impact max. I'm going to give you the speeds at which there is a minimum distance to stop so that you don't pull more than 9 Gs. If you stop beyond this distance, in other words, longer than this distance, then you won't, you'll pull much less than 9 Gs. If you stop in less than this distance, you'll pull more than 9 Gs. Therefore, you will not have the benefit of the uh, cockpit absorbing the energy of impact for you. And folks, uh, write these numbers down. At 50 miles per hour, you must stop in no less than 10 feet. I'm going to round off to the next slightly highest number here to make these numbers easy to remember. At 50 miles per hour, you must stop in no less than 10 feet. At 60 miles per hour, 